Hey guys, welcome to the Asteroid Hunter Control Center. My name is Mike. I know it's been a while since we've done a video. We're going to be uh, hopefully changing that. We're uh, putting together kind of a series of uh, videos here for a lot of questions that we get about how to hunt asteroids, uh, you know, how to measure them, what kind of, what does it take to get observations on them, those kinds of things. So today we're going to actually do a video on uh, one of the most common questions I get. How do you find these objects? How do you figure out what what uh, asteroids need uh, observations? Where do you find them? And uh, what I'm going to do is go through the Minor Planet Center website setup for you guys so you can, you can just see. Again, this is uh, real basic in here, what I'm going to show you guys. There are other ways to, to get around this website and to uh, configure kind of your settings if you want, but I'm going to show you what we use. It works for us pretty well. I'll also go into a couple of different pieces of software like SkyX and uh, Stellarium, which is a free piece of software uh, to be able to pull up those objects. So you can actually, um, you don't even have to type in the coordinates. You can load the databases from the Minor Planet Center and actually just uh, point right to them. So, but before we get started, please make sure you guys uh, check out those uh, social links that are coming up on the screen there. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate all the support you get. We do stream live on Twitch on uh, Sundays, and we are going to Wednesdays now. So uh, check us out there, and uh, you can click all the links below. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Here we go. Okay, here we are. We're at the minor plant, minorplanetcenter.net website. So it's not the easiest website to get around, guys. There's a lot of information, but anything you want to uh, know about uh, uh, NEO-related, asteroid-related, comet-related, this is the holding tank for everything. This is a NASA-funded organization. This is where they hold the over a million cataloged objects uh, that are out there. This is the place that we go when we want to figure out uh, what, where, and when about asteroids so it's not super easy to get around but i'm just going to essentially show you uh on a basic level how we pull up uh what what objects need potential observations and uh and what's in our sky at this given time that may need uh, additional observations so we can improve their orbits on them i'll show you that and i'll show you the database so you can pull so say you have an, an object name um, or id and you want to pull up information on that i'm going to show you that how to do that here as well um, again, there's many other things you can go through here and start messing around. These are the two things we use kind of the most. And uh, this is the question I get the most. How do you figure out what needs observations? How do you figure out what's out there? Here's, here's how we do it. We go to the observers drop down uh, menu here and we're gonna go to Neo services. We're gonna go to observation planning aid. Okay, in here, we have um, some options. I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. Again, it's in the video. You guys can back up, check through this stuff uh, and, and work this out. This, these are some of the default settings that are in here that are fine. We, we tend to not touch some of these settings. Some of these we will change based on our location and our parameters. This will change based on yours. But what we're gonna do is uh, essentially open up our kind of our viewing area and uh, we're gonna open up the actual speed of the object so, so we can kind of get an idea of what's out there and uh, and what needs observations. So some of these things we do leave as they are. It's gonna come up with today's date, that's totally fine. Um, we're gonna go to uh, zero range and we're gonna open this up to 360 degrees all the way around, okay? So this is, uh, we're just essentially opening up all this so we don't have any kind of uh, limiting um, defaults on here. So we put that to zero to 360. Now our deck range for us is negative 25 because that's the wall of the observatory. If I get below 25, I'm hitting the wall. So we, we our deck range is negative 25 up to plus uh, 90. Okay, our, mag, our magnitude range, and again, yours will change based on your parameters of your instrument that you may be using and your location. You know, we tend to get uh, close to about 19 magnitude with 30 second exposure. If you're stacking some of these images in Tycho, Tracker, or Astrometrica and stuff, you may be able to go deeper. So you can open this up if you want to. We'll just put it for 19 for now, uh, just for the example purposes here. Uh, again, motion range, we wanna open this up. We, wanna, we don't wanna be limited by anything. Some of these objects tend to be faster than the five degrees per day. Uh, we would just open it up to 222, man. Open it way up and uh, and that way we get to see kind of a broad range of what's what's out there. All these other things we, we leave as is, we don't mess with them. I will change the current uncertainty to zero to 1800 arc seconds. Again, just opening up the, uh, the speed of the object as well. 
Uh, only show objects not seen in more than one day. Anything beyond one day tends to be lost. Uh, it can be, so we tend to not uh, do do more than one day on that. So everything else we leave as a default. Come down here, make sure all these boxes are checked. They, they should be defaulted uh, checked. We will change the sort selected objects uncertainty in decreasing order. And uh, we're gonna basically produce the list. And it's gonna come up with a list here. I wish there was a select all button at the top of this. Unfortunately, there's not. You have to go through and physically start uh, checking all of these boxes, okay? And I'll only check a few of these just for our example purposes. There's a whole bunch more to check. I could spend, you know, another five minutes doing that. I won't. Uh, this is good enough for, for just the example of this. So, but you can see there's quite a few objects that come up on the list. Uh, and you can see, and it, and it gives some of the information, their armor, their fading, their Apollo. It's, it's telling me what their um, actual um, orbits are, their orbit types, and what's their fading. So they're going away from us at this point, potentially. Potentially they are, just uh, gives you some information here on. So we hit the get ephemeris, and uh, remember we're in uncertainty from decreasing order. So the top being the most uncertain, and then as the list goes down, it becomes more certain because there becomes more observations on them. So right off the top, these tend to be the, the ones right at the top is these ones that are flagged as virtual impactors. Don't freak out. Very common for uh, objects that have very few observations on them. This object could have potentially, you know, 10, 12, 15, maybe less observations on it. Uh, and it could be from 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And uh, it was kind of last time this thing was seen, but based on the few observations they had, they, they think, you know, it's possible that uh, it could be an impactor. But what ends up happening is, uh, and even says on their website, you know, it is normal that as additional observations become available, objects will disappear from this, from this, uh, from the virtual impact uh, designation. So not uncommon um, to see that. It's, it's, it's pretty common as well. But as I said, as, as these objects, if we can pick these objects up, find them, get more observations, then we can get more of an idea of what the orbit is uh, and where they're, where they're heading, and, uh, and then they would come off this list. So what I tend to do is I start, the, the information's all here of, of these objects. So what I tend to do is I'm looking at magnitude, the V number here. I'm looking at sky motion, the speed of the object. And then I'm looking at further observations where it says useful for orbital improvement. So these are the things that are that I'm that I'm looking for is, is those few things. I already put in my deck my deck range my RA range, so I know that uh, it's going to be pretty much well within my my viewing site. But you start going through here and just kind of making a list of what you want to uh, maybe um, take observations on. Now some of these objects have have gotten more and more observations as the weeks have gone on and uh, they don't need orbital improvement. You may see this and it says, you know, we're looking at further, do, do you need further observations? It's not necessary for this month. So this object doesn't really need any further observations. Uh, can you take observations? Absolutely, I'm not gonna discourage anybody from doing that. So, um, but what we're looking at is we wanna look at stuff that says useful for orbital improvement. And uh, we wanna look at things that are well within our uh, brightness range uh, and our speed. Uh, ability to be able to capture based on our actual um, equipment that we have. Again, another object that's, if it doesn't have a motion or a uh, magnitude, it's it's probably really dim, only has a few ob uh, observations on it, so it's dim. So I just tend to pass those up. Um, I don't I don't chase some of those things down. We just want to get, we want to get observations on objects that we know we can capture and, and use our time wisely through the night. So I'll go through this. So here's, here's one, 2003 YM1 useful for orbital improvement 17.4 well within our uh, capability with our 14 inch raza to build capture uh, sky motion 1.2 arc seconds per minute not a extremely fast object but um, very very easy for us to capture with say 30 second exposure um, we can capture this object super easy it gives its position angle sometimes these motions tend to be faster you might find objects here's one with four arc seconds per minute uh, you might some find some that are 15 arc seconds per minute you know those tend to be much more difficult because you need a, a fast exposure, faster exposure to capture them, and you hope that uh, your fast exposure will go deep enough. If it's a 19 magnitude asteroid, and uh, you need to only shoot 15 second exposure because that thing's really moving, otherwise it'll create a streak, I hope you can get to 19 magnitude with a 15 second exposure. 
again, if you stack them up, you may have you may have a, a shot. So um, obviously, as longer exposures, the deeper you can go. So just all depends on your limitations for your equipment and where you're at. So we'll just look at this 2003 YM1, say, okay, this is one we would put on the list, you know, for the night. 2005 FE2, 18.9. Yes, we could capture this four arc seconds per minute. Well, within our range, uh, we could absolutely capture this. Does it need orbital improvement? Yes. So we would put that on our list. So we basically compile our list for the night and we go, okay, these are the objects that we're gonna go after, okay? The other thing is I want to show you, so, so that's how we compile our list, okay, of things that we're looking at. And these, these are, uh, this, this list changes on a daily basis based on what the uh, Minor Planet Center wants, wants, uh, wants us to go try to get observations on. So you can look at this, should be looking at this list every day if you're doing this science all the time, okay. The other thing I want to show you guys on the uh, actual site itself is the, um, let me see if I can show it to you here. Uh, let me go up, back up to the, I'll just go to the home page. So we start where this uh, database right here, orbit observation database. This is something we use all the time as well. And we see you can basically right here is where you can put in the designation ID of an object and it'll give you all the information on it. Okay. So you can put in anything you want. You see, it's like 2008 TC3, uh, C slash 2012 S1. The C is a comet designation. So say you have a name of an object or a number, you can just type that in there and it'll show it to you and give you all the breakdown of it. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at, let's see if we can take a look at an object. Um, as you guys know, we have a sky survey that we, we run here every night, a fully automated survey. We're looking for new objects. Uh, we don't do a lot of follow-up um, through the database anymore like we used to back in the days. We now are looking for new objects. Um, that is our focus here at our observatory. So we cover a vast amount of sky. Our system will cover, will take a thousand images in a night, cover a vast amount of sky. During that time, we will capture known objects. Okay, objects that do need uh, orbital improvement. So our sky survey will just naturally capture them based on where it's looking in the sky. In some areas, we may capture a lot of known objects. Some areas we may not, just kind of depends on where we're looking. Um, so here the other night, we, we, uh, this was, these are all the objects we captured in a single night. There's over 300 in here. We've had up to a thousand before in a single night. We submit all these, all this data to the Minor Planet Center. Okay. It goes automatically sent. Um, so, but I want to show you guys how you can pull up the information on the database based on the name. So, so here's like an armor object. Here's the name Almeria. Okay. So we, we took observations of Almeria the other night. Uh, our sky survey happened to capture it. So let me just type in uh, Almeria. It's already here actually. And uh, we just hit show. It gives us the designation 5879-1992-CH1. Uh, here's all the information on that object. Uh, the, the orbital information it gives you the actual motion, uh, daily motion of it, those kinds of things. There's, there's a lot of breakdown on here of all of it, so you can see it. You can also see all the observations that have been done on it from all the observatories around the world. Currently, there's 630 observations. A lot of times we want to get, you know, they, they want to get thousands of observations. So um, it's good that there's quite a few, but we can always use more on some of these. So we can scroll down and see all the observatories that have taken observations. Uh, you can also see the latest observation, the very last one. Um, just taken uh, actually uh, this evening, this 224. So it was taken this morning, early this morning from U55. Um, if you scroll up, here's our obs observations that we took the other night, U71. These are the ones that on this list that I just showed you guys. They, so that's how you can tell if your observations get uh, get used by the Minor Planet Center as you go into this actual um, observation catalog and you can pull up and see if your observations are used. So these were the ones that our sky survey captured. Um, so we can also take a look. Let me go over here. The other day, I just I was, when I was putting this video together and I and I started looking at the um, the sky the, the the actual observation planning aid that we just did i saw 2003 ym1 that was one we just pulled up right that needed uh orbital improvement we just looked at that as an actual object well our sky survey happened to capture it the other night i, I saw it in the list here so 2003 ym1 
uh, was captured. So uh, let's take a look. I, I, I wanted to see there if uh, it got used. So go back to the database here. 2003 YM1. There it is. There's only uh, 550 observations. Again, an armor armor class asteroid, which we know our database told us that. Uh, we can scroll all the way down, and we'll take a look. Um, we took these observations back on the 3rd of February. So if I scroll up here, uh, there we are right here. So these are the three observations. So our sky survey automatically grabbed uh, it just it just uh, found it and then it automatically submitted the data and it just happened to be asteroids that we that we needed that we needed orbital improvement. So um, we happened to capture that as well. So our survey will actually grab that stuff uh, automatically. But again, if you're looking to you know figure out what objects need orbital improvement, what objects are out there, um, you can you can go through that planning aid and figure it out and then go to the database and check and see you know. Uh, where where things are at say and you can use the the database to figure out where what's you know the last observations where where objects may be out in the sky exactly so if you're if you're unsure you can type in a name of an object in that database scroll all the way down and figure out where maybe the last uh, observation now some of these may be you know they could be several years old potentially so uh, because again we have a, a certain amount of they you know the minor planet center has a certain amount of observations they don't need anymore so it, it the date could be but you can take a look at maybe what's up maybe what's you know what's what's the last observations right now this is kind of around the current position of this object currently um, again this is a couple days old 222 we're now on 224 so this may be changing a little bit based on the speed that up that object's not going too fast so it will be somewhere somewhere in these in these ranges so you can kind of see uh, what the last observations are um, so those are the few things that we use for the for the minor planet centers database what I want to show you guys now is essentially how to uh, um, pull up the this 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 object uh, designations in some of the software that you guys might have. So you may be running Stellarium. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if ACP does. Maybe it does. I know there's a lot of different software out there. You just got to see if your software will support. Um, you know, bringing in database from the Minor Planet Center or not. Um, that's kind of the most important thing. So I'll show you today just SkyX and I'm going to show you uh, Stellarium. Those are just the two. We use SkyX all the time. Um, so I'll show you those two things. But again, I know there's a lot of other software out there. You just have to kind of do some investigating on the one you're using and see if it'll pull up the Minor Planet Center database. If it does, then all you have to do is in your search for is just type in the designation of the object. And if it's pulling in the data from the Minor Planet Center that gets updated every day, it'll 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 point you right to the objects. Solarium, you can do that. You can pull in the Minor Planet Center database every day, type in the designation, and you can slew right to the object and start imaging. We did that for the first year when we got our observatory code. I was using Stellarium, and uh, I don't have to type in any coordinates. It was right in the finder. I'll show you that uh, right now, and I'll, and I'll use uh, 2003 YM1 as the example. Let me just copy that, uh, 2003 YM1. Okay, I'll show you uh, real quick. Let me show you Stellarium. Let me pull that up here. Let me launch that. It's going to take a second for it to come up. Okay, Stellarium is launched here. So um, I will show you guys how to pull in the database. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. Sometimes it'll, it takes a little time to do it, but I'll show you guys on Stellarium how to do it. There are other videos on this. By the way, that's how we figured it out was we watched some other videos. So uh, you go over here and you want to go to your configuration window. You're going to go to your plugins. Okay, and then you want to scroll down to solar system editor and you're going to do configure. And there you want to click the solar system tab and you want to import orbital elements in MPC format. Okay, now in here you have this drop down. It says download a list of objects from the internet. Okay. We're gonna. I'll just scroll down. You can download stuff from the McOrb database. So what I what I use a lot is this elements of NEAs for current epochs, near Earth asteroids. 
basically I would I would select this and hit get orbital elements. Let's see if it's it's gonna crash on me. <laughs> it shouldn't crash. I'm doing a video though, it might crash. No, it did not. So essentially it comes up, import data. You want to mark all of these and then hit add objects and it'll import all of the all of these objects. But these are all the objects that are out there coming in off the site, okay? So that's a way you can pull in that database. Okay, so I've already done that. So we'll just see once that once that database is pulled in, you go to your little search window, and we're just gonna type in 2003 YM1, right? And look, it comes up. It gives me the number, it comes up as the uh, as its object designation. Now, right now it's during the day, so it's below the horizon. Okay, so that's why, but it took me right to it. And it gives all the information on it here and shows us position. So I could literally just slew right to this object and start imaging. So here's an object that needs orbital improvement, needs actual observations on. I pulled it in right on the catalog on Stellarium. I searched it, went right to it, okay? Really easy, right guys? I mean, your, your software will do this for you a lot of times. Sometimes they're not in there and you gotta put in the actual coordinates uh, and that's okay, that's just part of it. So let me show you the um, SkyX version on how to do this. Uh, those of you maybe using SkyX. Uh, the big thing is I'll show you how to import the um, uh, database from the Minor Planet Center. You go to this uh, input, um, solar system bodies, and right here is the database, okay? Now, if you click this, you wanna click this button, this Minor Planet Center button, let me pull this over to you guys, and it takes you right here, and generally I, what I do is download the zipped version of this, the mccorb.dat, this is the one that you wanna download. So you just click that, and it's gonna automatically download it to your drive. You're gonna wanna unzip it, okay? And uh, you're gonna choose it. Here, here it is unzipped on my drive. This is today's date, 224. You wanna make sure you have the latest one. And you just hit import, and it's gonna import this uh, database. Now there's, there's a million objects here that's gonna import. It won't take too long, so it's importing. So um, our system's really fast. We have a crazy 3950X Ryzen with 128 gigs of RAM. So your system may uh, may take longer to do this, uh, just based on what you have. So don't be afraid if it does, just, just let it run. You wanna update this database on a daily basis, guys, okay? Remember what I said, as observations are coming in every day, right? They're coming in every night from observatories around the world. So you wanna get the latest location, you need to import the latest database. My system automatically goes to the Minor Planet Center every day and, and downloads this database automatically. So you have to do that. Before you do anything, put in the correct, the, the latest database. Otherwise, you're gonna be looking at objects that, you know, if the database is a month old, you're not gonna find the objects because it's gonna be searching an area that, that's not there. So uh, for, so let's search this up. Let's find this for SkyX. Uh, you wanna put MPL in there before you before you type it in. Um, that's how you pull up actual asteroid designations in SkyX. It has to be MPL and then the designation. You hit find. Now right now it says 2003 YM1. It's dark darkened out because it's below the horizon. So let me, uh, there's the object right there. Okay, there's 2003 YM1. Again, there's its location, below the horizon. Uh, when it's above the horizon, this will actually be a different color. I think it'll be white or something. Um, and it'll point you right to it. But uh, but there it is. That's really it, guys. Really easy. You can go through, pull up the information um, on the Minor Planet Center's website and uh, and then put in your parameters in there. You can search for what's, what's up there. Um, I'm also going to tell you guys this. If you join our Discord, those of you that may be wanting to get your observatory code uh, and you need to just take observations on, on objects, okay, and see what's up there. We do a full sky survey, so you guys saw the list that we compile. If you join our Discord, message me, I'm more than happy to share this list with you, and you can go through and start trying to figure out, hey, what's above, what's, you know, use the database that I showed you guys in the Minor Planet Center's website and start seeing what's up, what's not, uh, uh, based on that. I can send you lists of, of hundreds and hundreds of asteroids from our sky survey. I'm more than happy to share that with you guys and help you out um, because you need to take observations to get for your observatory code uh, and start submitting that. Or if you're just like, hey, I just want to take observations of asteroids that are out there. So I'm more than happy to share this these lists with you. So again, 
go ahead and join the Discord. Message me in there. Uh, if you want, drop me an email, asteroidhunters at gmail.com. And I'm more, again, more than happy to share those lists with you guys so you guys can see kind of what's up. Our sky survey runs every night. Uh, weather penning. We've been under a lot of winds lately. Uh, so this, these lists are, you know, constantly getting updated, uh, getting changed and those kind of things. So, uh, based on where we're looking and our position in the sky. So, all right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it's, uh, informative for you. And again, we stream on, uh, Twitch and, uh, on Sunday and Wednesday nights. Don't forget to uh, drop the like and subscribe and, uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. You guys take care.